news. Six o'clock. CBS News Brief. States from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts are bracing for a powerful winter snowstorm. The good news? CBS meteorologist David Parkinson. As quickly as the storm arrives, it will be gone. So it starts with the morning commute and it is gone before the evening commute. Schools in New York and Boston are closed. New York City police looking for suspects in a deadly shooting at a subway station. CBS New York, Sally Bauman. A total of six people were shot. The youngest, a 14-year-old girl, and the oldest, a 71-year-old man. Defense Secretary Austin still hospitalized for bladder issues weeks after suffering complications from prostate cancer surgery. CBS's David Martin. Despite the complications, Austin's doctors say his chances of beating the cancer are still excellent. When the White House was asked if the president has any concerns about Austin's ability to continue in the job, the answer was not at all. CBS News Brief. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. I'm Dennis Rumsey with a news update. A Cassopolis man died in a single vehicle crash over the weekend in Cass County's Wayne Township. Sheriff Richard Benke said deputies were called at 7.40 a.m. Saturday to Dutch Settlement Road in an area near Newbor Street. Benke said 72-year-old Doran Preston was traveling east on Dutch Settlement Road when the vehicle he was driving left the roadway and struck a tree. Preston was pronounced dead at the scene. St. Joseph County Commissioners are scheduled to discuss four items of business at today's Executive Committee meeting. The first matter centers on St. Joseph County Road Commission Manager John Lindsay, who plans to update commissioners on the agency's 2024 village renewal request. Meanwhile, Central Dispatch Director Stacy Bauer is slated to discuss an agenda item regarding a communications tower. Prosecutor David Marvin will provide a prosecutor's office status and update, and commissioners are expected to discuss the status of the court's building project. Constantine Village officials have established a municipal building authority, putting the community a step closer to funding for a new fire station. During their February 5th meeting, council members approved the measure as a prerequisite to apply for a federal rural development loan. The federal loans typically come with lower interest rates than traditional bank loans. The village estimates a new fire station will cost more than $2.7 million. According to Roger Sweats, bond attorney for the law firm Dickinson Wright, the village would lease the new station from the building authority and be responsible for its day-to-day -day expenses. Turning now to sports, high school basketball comes your way tonight from Three Rivers High School. The Wildcats boys team will be in action in a Wolverine Conference contest against Otsego. Three Rivers took it on the chin Friday in a 19-point loss at Vicksburg, dropping the Wildcats to 3-14 and 14 on the season. Otsego is holding second place in the conference and enters the game with a 14-4 record. It is coming off a loss to Edwardsburg last week. Tonight's game will be carried live on WRCI 97.1 FM starting at about 7.05 p.m. with tip-off slated for 7.15. The broadcast will also be streamed online at WRCIRadio.com. I'm Dennis Rumsey. Here's your updated WRCI forecast. Cloudy skies with a few peaks of sun. Today with daytime highs approaching 38. Northwesterly winds 8 to 15 miles an hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight. Lowest. What's wrong with it? Why not saying this battery pack is a bad design and unsafe? If your battery is in, as if you probably already know what's missing. Each one of these modules here has two wires coming out of it. A positive and a negative. Now you don't off. even need to find the built-in. No all right. Battery management system. It's all you. There's no individual cell monitoring at all. Uh, you thanks, Michelle Russo. Or battery management system. It'll have a balance lead going to each individual cell in the overall series. So it can monitor each cell group's voltage individually to prevent overcharging, over-discharging, and to keep all of the cells balanced to the same voltage. Because the twice doesn't have a BMS, it has no idea what each individual cell voltage is, and it has no way to keep the <sighs> in balance. So when it charges, it just charges to an overall pack target voltage, and the charger will just keep dumping in current until that overall pack target voltage is met. In normal operation, but this is not going to happen right now. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Jack. Thanks. Yeah, I know. They'll all end up roughly at 4.2 volts, all on their own. The problem is those pesky edge cases. Let's say in an extreme example, you got one cell that has a significantly lower voltage than the rest of the pack. 
The charger doesn't know that, so it's still going to target the same charging voltage for the sum of the pack, because that one cell is lower than the rest of them. To bring up the sum voltage for the rest of the pack, the rest of the cells have to be overcharged. Or for a different scenario, you can have a couple of cells that are slightly higher voltage than the rest of the pack. Again, the charger's just looking at the sum total voltage. You can have a couple of cells that are significantly overcharged. Our charging damage is the best.